Welcome to episode seven of Raise the Bar with me, your host, Daryl Labar. In this video, we're gonna take a different approach and I'm gonna actually walk into how I deal with web resources using the web resource manager within the external toolbox and some changes I made to handle some issues I was facing in a current client. So let's go take a look at the web resource manager. If you don't know what this is, it's a plugin that comes with the external toolbox. It's not one that you have to go find in the store. It actually will come in by default um, with the, the standard external toolbox. It is a great tool to be able to go and load web resources from CRM as well as be able to push web resources and even edit web resources. Now, generally, I don't edit the web resources in the web resource manager for two reasons. One, I usually use TypeScript and that takes, uh, you can't do that in the web resource manager. Two, uh, it, uh, I like the, the extra intel sense I get within the actual web resource, uh, within Visual Studios and other tools. So uh, that's why I don't necessarily use it. You, you might use it every now and then for just a quick little edit, but uh, yeah, generally I like the the changes within Visual Studio and everything's in TFS that way and everything's a little more smoother that way. So, but this is this is how I actually manage this. So um, when I get a new project and they don't already have uh, TFS with all the web resources, or maybe they do and it's got some weird structure, I try to go through and normal, normalize the structure. Meaning I take whatever is in CRM and I check that structure into CRM, uh, into TFS, excuse me. So let's say for example, that I need to work with this, uh, this mag, uh, um, files here. So I have some JavaScript, images, CSS, great. So I click that and I'm going to say uh, save check resources with root to disk right there. And now if I go and actually open up that uh, folder here, we so we have our temp web resources and we have our file here, alert. Uh, now notice this is the part that was having issue with. That alert.js, uh, that alert file is on the JavaScript file and it doesn't exist. Once I have the files downloaded, I'll go ahead and load them from the disk and we'll see what we have an issue here. Uh, we don't have that JavaScript file because it doesn't have a valid extension. The web resource manager needs that extension in there to know what type of web resource it's going to push to CRM. CRM says what type of web resource is it? Is it a script? Is it something else? So it has to have that extension. If it doesn't have it, it shows up down here on our invalid extension uh, and file names list. So actually right here, if I get it right. Um, so how do we get around that issue? How do I get around that issue? So if I go back and look at the file here, you know, you could go through and just rename the JavaScript file and, and edit it and, and push it. The problem is when you push it, you're now pushing the jo a JavaScript file that has a .js extension. So that's going to be a new file in CRM, which means that you've got to update all of your references to the old file without the extension to the new file with the extension. That means you need to update all of your, uh, your onloads, all of your change events, all of your uh, ribbons, and all of your HTML files that are mainly pointing to that file. So if you're not sure of where all those live, that's a really scary thing to do and something you don't want to do on a really large project as well because you could be adding a lot of extra uh, cost to the project with very little benefit. Um, you just rename something. Yeah. So, so what you want to be able to do is be able to edit it with that JavaScript extension but push it without the JavaScript extension. So how do you do that? I'm going to go ahead and make my copy here. Now I'm going to name the same exact file name but with the correct extension. Now within Web Resource Manager, I'm going to make sure this sync matching files as extension list is set to true. And once I've done that and I load the file, it's going to go and if it's five files are the same exact name, but one of them has a different extension, or one of them has an extension, one doesn't, it's going to go, ah, that file was loaded in CRM without an extension. So you're having that both of those files there. So I know that, hey, these file names match. It's really a JavaScript file. When I push it, push it without the extension. And that's exactly what will happen now. Now I can go in and I can, I can edit this JS file. Notice it says JS right here, but it's only, uh, there's no JS here. That's because it is indeed going to push it without the JS extension to CRM, which is great. Um, so you can make your change here and say, all right, go ahead and save and publish a CRM server. It's gonna push, push that. And when it pushes that, it pushes that without having the JS extension. So therefore it uh, doesn't create a new version of it. So if I can actually load the web resources again, we will see under the mag solution that, or the mag folder here, that it does not have that alert.js extension because it didn't actually push that file. Uh, another thing I added here, which is uh, you know, kind of nice to have here, is uh, I really like having my warnings really be issues. I like to always clear my warnings in Visual Studios, especially, and in this too. So I have this file here, and this file may contain special instructions that I want to have, and I want to have in that folder within TFS, but I want to ignore it within the web resource manager. How do I do that? So here's a little uh, ignored filed uh, options that I add here. And so I can go ahead and say, all right, here's the path to that file, the relative path. Say, okay. And now when I go ahead and load my web resources, you'll see, oh, that's gone. It's gone because uh, it's been ignored. So now you can actually go through and, and target which files you want to have ignored. That way, when you actually do mess up on naming an extension, you actually catch it before you actually push it to CRM, which is always better than doing it later. So there you have it. 
Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that's something that's helpful for you. This is not live yet uh, in the web resource manager because Tangi's on vacation. I try to give that guy a break sometimes, let us all. And uh, But I did uh, did post some uh, downloads of the bits that you can get on uh, Twitter. So feel free to go and download it from there. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this episode of Raise the Bar. If you have any future topics to discuss, please let me know. If you have any questions, please put them in below in the comments. And if you um, have any ideas, I'd love to hear that. I'd love to hear positive feedback. Um, if you've got constructive feedback, I'd love to hear that too. Um, and if uh, you have anything else to let me know, I'd love to hear that too. Reach out. Um, it's good having this community, good having this discussion. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Um, if it was, feel free to subscribe and feel free to like it. And that way I get a little more uh, information on my channel and a little more uh, visibility and more people could see, um, see what it's like to do some serum dev work, huh? So have a great one and I'll talk to you later. Bye.